the Cobb Douglas production function explained. Welcome back, economists. Today we're diving into one of the most famous and elegant tools in production theory, the Cobb Douglas production function. It's a model that captures how firms transform inputs, like labor and capital, into output, and it's been shaping how we understand growth, productivity, and efficiency for over a century. By the end of this video, you'll understand where it came from, what it means mathematically, and why it's still so useful, not just in production, but even in consumer theory. The story begins in the early 20th century with two people, Charles Cobb, a mathematician, and Paul Douglas, an economist. In the 1920s, they teamed up to study how labor and capital contributed to U.S. manufacturing output between 1899 and 1922. They wanted to answer a simple but profound question. How much of production can we attribute to labor and how much to capital? Their work led to a functional form that captured the relationship between inputs and output remarkably well, and that form became known as the Cup douglas production function. Here's the general version. Output Y depends on multiple inputs, X1, X2, Xn. Each input is raised to some exponent alpha i, and the whole product is multiplied by a constant gamma. Let's break that down. Y is the output, for example, GDP. Xi is the quantity of each input, like labor, capital, land, etc. Alpha i is the output elasticity of each input. It tells us how sensitive output is to changes in that input. Gamma is a scaling factor capturing overall efficiency or technology. Cobb and Douglas made one key assumption. The exponents alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha n equals 1. That means the model exhibits constant returns to scale. If you double all inputs, output doubles too. In practice, most applications focus on just two inputs, labor and capital. That gives us the simpler and more familiar form y equals al alpha k beta, where a is technology or total factor productivity and alpha and beta are those elasticities again. If alpha plus beta equals one, we have constant returns to scale. If they add to less than one, that means decreasing returns to scale. Doubling inputs less than doubles output. If they add to more than one, we get increasing returns to scale. Now, taking the natural logarithm of both sides gives ln y equals ln a plus alpha ln l plus beta ln k. This is incredibly useful because it lets us estimate alpha and beta empirically using regression analysis. Using US data from 1899 to 1922, Cobb and Douglas estimated that alpha equals 0.75 and beta equals 0.25. That means labor contributed about three quarters of US manufacturing output and capital the remaining quarter. They also found a technology parameter gamma equals 1.01, slightly greater than one, reflecting unobserved technological progress, boosting production efficiency over time. Let's explore what this function tells us about production behavior. One, complementarity. The inputs or complements in production. Mathematically, the cross partial derivative of output with respect to labor and capital is positive. Intuitively, this means that having more capital makes labor more productive, and vice versa. Two, diminishing marginal returns. Each input has diminishing marginal returns. As you increase labor while keeping capital constant, output rises, but by smaller and smaller increments. The intuition for this is straightforward. Imagine that a company gives all of its employees a laptop. Productivity would certainly rise. Now imagine that same company giving each employee a second laptop. Productivity would probably rise, but not by very much. 3. Constant elasticity of substitution. The cup douglas function assumes an elasticity of substitution equal to 1, meaning a proportional change in the ratio of inputs 
leads to a proportional change in their marginal rate of technical substitution. Each curve represents combinations of L and K that produce the same output. In other words, every point of the isoquant represents the same total output, using different combinations of inputs. The farther an isoquant is from the origin, the higher the output. And if you overlay an isocos line, showing combinations of L and K that cost the same, the tangency point gives the optimal input mix for the firm's budget. At this tangent point, a firm is producing output at the same level given by isoquant using the lowest cost. Even though Kaup and Douglas admitted their model wasn't a law of production, it became a cornerstone of economic modeling because of its simplicity and flexibility. It captures key real-world behaviors like diminishing returns, factor shares, and technological change, while being easy to estimate with real data. That's why the Cobb douglas form appears not only in production theory, but also in growth models, development economics, and macroeconomic simulations. Here's a fun twist. The Cobb douglas functional form isn't limited to production. Economists also use it in consumer theory, where output Y becomes utility U, and inputs become consumption goods. So we write U equals X1 alpha, x to 1 minus alpha. Maximizing this utility, subject to a budget constraint, gives the optimal allocation of spending across goods based on the alpha parameters, which represent how much importance the consumer places on each good. So, the Cobb douglas production function, a century-old idea, continues to influence how economists understand productivity, technology, and efficiency today. From the factory floor to the aggregate economy, it remains a foundational tool in economic analysis. If you found this explanation useful, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more economics deep dives. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.